Hey guys, long time no see, but I am finally going to tell you guys my my labor and delivery story. Let me grab her. Hey. Hey. So I kind of I'm kind of like back and forth on saying um, labor and delivery story instead of delivery story because um, as you all know, I was supposed to have a scheduled C-section on August 26th and um, I was just supposed to be able to walk in there and get a C-section. I wasn't supposed to labor. But on the morning of August 14th, I actually did go into spontaneous labor. So I guess I could say I labored for a little while, but um, I did end up having the C-section. But yeah, let's just go into the story. So, <clears throat> so I wanted Dante to be in this video because there are some parts of the story that are kind of a blur to me that only he he really knows. But um. He's so busy and I didn't want to put off the video any longer. So I just decided to record it alone, but he's so busy. So, um, I would, I didn't really know when I was going to actually be able to film it with him in it, but let's just start off from the morning of August 14th, 2019. So at about three o'clock in the morning, um, I woke up to contractions and the contractions weren't hurting. They just felt, um, well, they were, they were like a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit painful, but they weren't like the full blown, um, you know, like real labor contractions when you're like five centimeters dilated, but they were uncomfortable and they were coming fast enough to make me want to record them. And the day prior, I had actually had my 37 week, um, prenatal appointment. And my doctor had told me whenever your contractions get to be about uh, six to seven minutes apart, just go ahead and go into the um, hospital and they will just go ahead and perform the C-section. You don't have to worry about waiting until the 26th. And she had brought that up because I had told her about the contractions I had been having. And I, and I did tell her that they were inconsistent, but I was having them and they were, you know, getting to be pretty strong. And she had reassured me that that was... Um, that that was normal at 37 weeks. But, um, you know, just in case, if they do get to be consistent six to seven minutes apart, then just come in. So when I woke up at three o'clock that, that morning on the 14th, I started timing them on um, on my pregnancy app, the bump that I've, that I've been telling you guys about this whole pregnancy. They have a contraction timer tool on there. And um, I used it with DJ, so I wanted to use the same one with, with Chastity. And... Um, so I started timing them and when I first started timing them, they were, oh, let me go, let me look at it real quick. So I started timing them at around four in the morning, but I woke up at three o'clock in the morning because, um, I started, I've noticed that I was having the contractions. So I waited an hour just to see if they were consistent and they were. So at four o'clock in the morning, I started timing them and they were between like um, six to eight minutes apart. So um, I just kept on timing. I, I timed them for like um, for like two more hours. <laughs> and each hour they were getting, the time in between my contractions were getting shorter and shorter. So like around six in the morning, um, I don't think, no, Dante's, Dante's alarm didn't go off yet, but he heard me walking around and stuff. So of course he woke up and I told him, I'm like, I'm having contractions. So, um, I said, I'm going to call. I said, I'm going to call the hospital to try to get the doctor and see what they want me to do. So, um, so he was just like, all right. And then he went back to sleep. So you guys, I called the doctor. I, well, I called the hospital and they paged the doctor. She said, if the doctor doesn't give, if they don't give you a call back within 20 minutes, then to call back. The doctor never called. 
So I called back 20 minutes after that, and she said she was going to pace the doctor again. And the doctor still never called. So at that point, I was just like, you know what? These contractions aren't letting up. So I'm just going to go in, um, you know, once we get DJ off to school and everything. I said, I'll give it a couple more hours because you can't, his daycare doesn't open until 645. So um, that will give me time. <laughs> that will give me time. I'm laughing because you guys, I, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. But that gives me time to just get everything ready. And um, so <clears throat> just to get everything ready for me to be gone, just in case that they were going to be keeping me. So at that point, you guys, remember in my last um, pregnancy update, I think it was weeks 35 and 36, I told you guys I did not want to come home to a messy house. So I had planned on cleaning the house up cooking like um just uh microwavable meals for Dante to have while I'm in the hospital. I had planned on doing all of that stuff the next weekend when I was turning um 38 weeks. I planned on doing that that between that weekend and then the um next weekend where I was gonna be 39 weeks. So I at six o'clock in the morning I was running around this house cleaning up, straightening up, making sure that the, top, that the house was tidy because I did not want to come home to a messy house um, with, a, with the new baby. And I said, just in case they keep me, I'm going to clean up this house. So you guys, I did the dishes. I was wiping down tables. I cleaned the bathroom. Um, oh, excuse me. And actually, during that time, the contractions kind of let up a little bit. So I was like, okay, maybe I'm not really having contractions. So I sat down. I was like, let me just rest my body. So I sat down and then sure enough, they started coming on again about every um, six to eight minutes again. So I told Dante, once Dante's alarm started going off, um, you guys saw it in my labor and delivery vlog. His alarm started going off at around 6.45 in the morning. And I told him, um, let's get DJ dressed and ready for school. We can go drop him off at school and then we can just go to the hospital because the doctor is not calling me back. So, um, that's what we did. And, um, so I had got my bags together and ready and everything. I was about to put him in his car. And at this time it's, it's probably like around eight in the morning. No, maybe it wasn't eight. It was close to eight. It was like maybe seven thirty, seven forty five. And he was like, well, I don't want to bring them back yet because they may not keep you. I'll just, if they do keep you, I'll just bring them back up here. So I was like, all right, that's cool. So um, this next part, I always get emotional when I think about it. But um, So we went to go take DJ to school. And um, I just remember thinking, I always start crying. But... I don't know why I cry because the outcome is positive, but I was just thinking like, what if this is my last time? <sighs> so, um, Dante went to go take DJ into the school. And DJ was just waving at me and um the smile on his face I'm messing up my makeup hold on guys let me get myself together okay let me get myself together I used a little cotton round <laughs> but so Dante went to go take him into the school and I didn't want to take him in there because I didn't know what was going to be the outcome and I didn't want people, you know, to get too excited, you know, his teachers and everything to get too excited about uh, me going into labor and then it doesn't happen. So I was like, I'm just going to stay in the car and you could take him into the school. But just thinking about DJ's face makes me emotional. Um, so Dante was holding him when he took him into the school and the way he was holding him, 
when DJ was looking at me, he was just smiling. And I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> so the way he was just smiling at me made me, I don't know, for some reason made me think like, what if this is my last time seeing him? And the reason why I get so emotional I hate crying y'all because I'm an ugly crier. But the reason why I get so emotional is because it almost came into fruition. But I will tell you guys that as I tell the story. But I was just thinking like, well, this is my last time seeing him. I just can't get myself together. Um, what if something happens during the delivery where I don't make it? Um, but I didn't even give him a hug. <laughs> okay. So I didn't even give him a hug. I didn't, well, when I, when, when Dante had got him out the car, I didn't even think, I wasn't thinking like that. I didn't think like that until the second I saw him smile. And then I start getting those scary thoughts. So, um, then I started like having the guilt, the guilt feeling like I didn't even give him a hug. And I definitely didn't want to go in to give him a hug, crying and stuff like that, because it would have brought on too much attention. Even though I'm sure everybody would have um, understood, but I just didn't want that type of attention. But I was thinking, I was thinking, what if this is my last time seeing him? And, um, I just kept thinking, like, he needs me. You guys, let me get myself together real quick. You guys, I'm so embarrassed for crying like this on camera. Dante's about to walk in with his friend. They want me looking at me like, what is wrong with her? But, um, yeah. So, I was, think I was just thinking, like, he needs me, so... What, what will he do without me? So, um, so Dante came out and this is kind of funny. Dante came out of the daycare and he just, he saw me in the, in the car crying and he like, he, I saw him throw his hands up like, and then I heard him mouth. He was like, what's wrong now? So he get in the car. I'm trying to tell him, I'm trying to explain to him why I'm crying. And, um, And he, he's just like, bae, like, why are you doing this to yourself? But you know, it's hard not to think like that because you go on Facebook or you watch the news and you hear about these women dying in childbirth. And in more recent news, you hear about more black women dying in childbirth and doctors and nurses not taking them as serious. And the reason why... I get so emotional about it now is because it almost happened to me. But like I said, I'll, t I'll get to that part of the story when I get there. So finally, um, we were on our way to the hospital. Actually, no. See, Dante was making me mad because he wants to make all these stops before we actually go to the hospital. I'm like, dude, we need to get to the hospital because I, ca I, should I cannot labor that long. So he wanted to stop by the bank and then he wanted to get something to eat, but he didn't get anything to eat. We just stopped at the bank and then we went to the hospital and, um, 
And I'm trying to, I'm looking at Dante outside the window. I'm trying to see what he's doing. So we got we get to the hospital and we go to triage. And the nurses, you know, they put the monitors on you and everything. And um the one nurse checks my cervix. And she's like, um, she was like, um, I'm pretty sure you're in labor because your cervix is really, really soft. So I was like, okay. But I think my contractions, my contractions may have stopped being consistent, but they were still coming, but they weren't like coming every, every five minutes or so they, but they were still coming and they were like really strong. So the one nurse checked my dilation and I was 1.5 centimeters dilated. And then, um, I'm filming, I'm filming. You want to say hi? Bango! Y'all know how somebody asks you if you're okay? And if you cry, it make you cry more. So that's what Dante just did. I need to get myself together, man. Okay, so, yo, I'm all snotty nose and crying. So the one nurse checked me. I was 1.5 centimeters dilated. So they left out. <laughs> and this is the funny part. So they came back in and was like, um, the nurse came back in and was like, did you have sex last night? And me and Dante looked at each other like, we were like, yeah. She was like, I bet that's why. So she was just like, um, we're going to give you guys a, uh, um, where is he going? She was just like, we're going to try to give you a couple hours to calm down, to let your body calm down because we think, um, that it's just a false alarm. She was like, it's not, she was like, it's not wrong that you have sex. You can have sex, but sometimes it can bring on contractions. <laughs> And she was like, I, I, I think that's what's going on here. So she left out the room for like another hour and a half and no, nobody ever came back. But I, I saw on the monitor and I felt my contractions were still coming. Um, at this point, it was like every five minutes, every four to five minutes. And they were getting stronger. So, uh, so when she came back an hour and a half, she was like, I'm just going to check you again. So remind you, the last time she checked me, I was 1.5 centimeters dilated. When she checked me this time, I had bounced up to 3.5 centimeters. So she was like, she was like, yeah, you dilated some. And she, she didn't even tell me how much I dilated, dilated at this point. It's almost like she rushed out of the room to go to, she was like, I'm going to go let the doctors know and see what they say. At this point, it's like 1230. So we had, we had got to the hospital like around eight. So from eight to 1230, they were just monitoring me and they can, they kept checking me and stuff. So it's 1230 now. And, um, all of a sudden, no, it's not even 1230. No, that, so that was 1230 when she checked me. So now it's like one o'clock. It's like three, like two nurses and three or four doctors walk in and they was like, it looks like you're going to have a baby today. So I was just like, wait, what? So they was like, yeah, we'll give you the C-section around two o'clock. You guys, I, t I told you they walked in at one o'clock. They said they were gonna give me a C-section at two o'clock. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm like, can I get some time to, um, you know, let my family know or something? <laughs> and then they were like laughing and everything. And then um, Dante had never eaten. And this whole time he kept asking me if he could just leave and go get something to eat. But I was telling him no because I was scared. You know, I didn't know what was going to happen. So I didn't know if they like, if they were going to wheel me in right away. Like, what if something happened where they had to wheel me in to get a C-section? I, I just didn't want him to leave. So they told him that he had enough time to go get something to eat. And they would just wait till he get back. So um, I forgot to tell you guys. I forgot to mention. Every time a nurse or a doctor came in, they kept asking me if I, if I was sure that I wanted to get uh, my tubes tied. And if you're new to my channel, um, I discussed it on previous videos, but um, I am 29 years old. I, this She's my second baby, and I, would, I just didn't want to have more than two kids. And apparently I'm very fertile, and I just didn't want to uh, make any mistakes, so I had decided to get my tubes tied during the C-section. 
So every time a nurse or a doctor came in, they kept asking me if I was sure. And they had warned me that they was going to ask me like 50 times before they actually did it. So um, this time, the doctor, when the doctors came in and, and told me that they would be giving me the C-section at 2 o'clock, she asked me again. And um, so she was like, okay. So um, so then they all leave out. Dante go get something to eat. And then this doctor came back in. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't my normal prenatal doctor. She, I, she was on call, but, um, I think she gets, she gets off of on call in the morning because I know she sees patients during the day. So this was a different doctor and she came back in. I hope my face not looking crazy. My eyes just all puffy and stuff, but oh well. She came back in and she asked me again about the, um, getting my tubes tied. And I'm like, yes, I want my tubes tied. So then she started giving me scenarios about what if I get in the car. She was like, God forbid you get in a car accident and you lose both of your babies. And I gave her the same thing. I gave her the same reason I told you guys before the previous video. No other baby will be ever be able to replace my current babies. And I don't even think I'll be in the mental state to take care of a new baby if I lost both of my children. So, yes, I want them tied. So she was like, okay. She was like, I can respect that. And, um... And then she had talked about another, she was like, I have another option for you. She's like, we can actually remove your fallopian tubes. And um, she's like, it can prevent your risk of contracting um, ovarian cancer. So um, she was like, she was like, the only thing about that is you will never, ever be able to have children again. And she was like, with getting your tubes tied, she was like, it's irreversible. She's like, but there are, she's like, there is a procedure that you can get done that costs about $30,000 where you can get it reversed and try to have another baby. And then um, she's like, but if you get your fallopian tubes removed, there, there's no way of, re of reversing it. So I, just, I started thinking about it and I was just like, well, um, I'm not going to pay $30,000 to try to reverse getting my tubes tied or, or, or reverse that procedure. And, um... Um, cancer does run, um, on my dad's side of the family. So then I was just thinking like, if I can prevent any type of cancer, then I will. So I was like, yeah, let's do it because I mean, I don't know. I don't want any more kids anyway. And then if I can prevent cancer, <laughs> which is like a, a fear of mine, then, um, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. So she was like, okay. And she, um, she, she like, I'm going to let you think about it for a minute. And she like, then I'll come back and then I'll have you just sign some consent. So she came back about 30 minutes later and she was like, um, are you sure this is what you want to do? So I was like, yes. So uh, we signed the consent and everything. And she was like, all right. She was like, we should be back in, um, in about an hour and we'll give you like all your medicine and everything for the C-section and we'll start the procedure. So in that time, Dante came back, um, they actually didn't even will me back to start the C-section until like three o'clock. And, um, they had gave me something. It was something, it's like a sour little drink I had to drink. It's like in the, in the container like that big. And, um, I, I think it like coats my stomach or something. I'm, I don't really know. They gave me that and I had to take some other type of pill before they started the procedure. You guys, I forgot to add that this whole time. The whole time I was in um, labor, my mom was out of town. And y'all, if you know me, you know that my mom is like my right my right hand, my ride or die. So if I want anybody there, I would want it to be Dante and my mom. And she was out of town. And she was thinking it was going to be a false alarm. So she didn't want to leave her training to, um, to come and be with me. But as soon as she heard that um, I was in actual labor... She got on the road and she got there. I think she got there just as they were um, willing me back for the C-section. Um, yeah, she got there just as they were willing me back. So she was actually there for the actual delivery, but for the laboring part, she was not there. And she was just like, she's like, please hold off, please hold off, please hold off. And then when she... <laughs> When she heard that it was brought on, the labor was brought on because of sex, I texted her and she was like, you were having sex? <laughs> she was so salty, but I'm like, 
I'm like, I had to give him something to hold him over because I knew I wasn't going to be in the mood for the rest of the pregnancy. And then you got to wait the six weeks. So I was like, let me just give him something to hold him over and he should be good, good to go until it's, until I get the okay to have sex. So they all came back to get me. They had Dante stay back to put on his um, like little garments and everything. And they had went, they I, I had to walk to the OR room where they were going to do the um, the spinal. What it's, it's like an epidural, but it's not an epidural. But it numbs you from like like here down. And um, so they did all of that. And um, I remember thinking um, after they did that, they I had laid back on the table. And I remember my body just like going so numb. I'm like that stuff works fast and it works good because I saw the I saw like a reflection of myself it wasn't a mirror it was like more of like a um like a light fixture that they have over the operating table I saw a reflection of myself and they were just like moving my legs every which way and I didn't feel a thing so I'm like okay they were like sticking catheters in me I, I saw everything they were sticking catheters in me and I didn't feel a thing so finally I just remember thinking like, where's Dante? Dante's not back here yet. And there, it sounded like they about to get started. So I'm like, where's my husband? He needs to be in here. So they was like, um, they was like, can somebody go get the husband? So I don't know if they had forgot or what, but finally he came back, he sat down and I just, you know, just a feeling of relief came over me because, um, he was finally in the room and I did not want, um, to be in there without him. So, um, so he, um, he sits down and they start the procedure and, um, I don't feel anything. I just feel, I feel like my body moving around and everything, but I don't feel, um, uh, I don't feel like a ton. And I remember thinking like, it's taking a little bit, it's taking a long time. Cause I remember with DJ, it happened like that. To me, that's what it seemed like. And, um, so finally I felt like the real tugging and pulling. And all of a sudden, you hear that cry, and it's like the most beautiful noise that you ever hear. Because <clears throat> um, if you've given birth before, it, even though you think it's like a health, you're having a healthy delivery, you're just always scared of the unknown. So just to hear that cry is like the best feeling ever. It's like the best noise in the world. <laughs> and you guys, what's funny is just her coming out and that cry. Um, while we're in the in the OR room, that's the most she's ever cried since she's been here on this earth. This is the, she's a really good baby. She hardly ever cries. But, um, so yeah, they, and they, they put her over like the little curtain. They put a curtain over you right when you're getting a C-section. So they put her over the curtain. They was like, look, mom, you see your baby? So I, I saw her, I saw like the side of her face, a side profile. And I was just like, oh, my baby. So then they, um. Actually, actually, when they first put her out, they had a picture. I'll, I'll insert a picture right here. But they held her up like that, and they let Dante take pictures of her and everything and get a good look at her. And then um, after I looked at her, they took her over to, like, I guess, I think it's called, like, a warming station where they clean the baby off and they have them under a light. And that's where they cut the umbilical cord and everything. One thing they did not do, though, they did not let Dante cut the umbilical cord. And I'm not sure why. Because she was she was perfect. They did say though that she was having some respiratory issues and she may have to go to a, the NICU, but that was resolved within like two or three minutes and she was cool and they let Dante hold her and um, they even let her come back to the recovery with me. So I'm not sure why they didn't let him cut the cord, which I was kind of salty about, but I didn't make a big deal out of this because I was happy to have a healthy baby. So um, they stitched me back together and everything. And, um, they will me to the recovery. So in recovery, um, I don't think I got to hold her. I don't think I got to hold her yet because I was still pretty numb. Or maybe I did, but I don't know. Me, her, and Dante went back to recovery and the nurses were just monitoring me and everything. Actually, you know what? Um, I did hold her cause I remember feeding her. I fed her in recovery. So, um, me, Dante, we got to hold her for a little while. My mom came back she got to hold her and my dad came back. 
And um, when my dad came back, he didn't get to hold her because I was feeding her at the time. But um, after my dad left is when all the chaos happened, which gets really, really scary and why I get so emotional thinking about um, dropping DJ off. So my dad leaves and may a couple minutes go by. The nurse is like um, checking me. Um, you know, they press down on your on your stomach just to make sure your uterus is going back into place and everything. And I guess as she's pressing down, blood clots are coming out. So I see the look on her face and she looks alarmed. She calls the doctor over and um, she's like, um, she's like, do you see how much that is? Is that okay? And the doctor, doctor is like, yeah, that looks good. That looks good. But I was thinking like this nurse is a labor and delivery nurse and she seems concerned. So I'm pretty sure it's abnormal because she, she does this every day and she's like concerned about it. But the doctor said it looks good. So, um, I didn't, I didn't really pay too much attention after that. So then a few more minutes go by and, um, the nurse was doing the same thing and then she leaves and go get another nurse and another doctor next thing you know i'm I'm by myself nobody's back there with me because at this point i did not know they weren't letting anybody else back because um i guess there was cause for concern they didn't want anybody back there they wouldn't even let dante back but all these nurses come start coming nurses and doctors coming around they're trying to um give you guys i have so many pricks on my body just from them trying to find blood and what I didn't know what was happening was I was losing so much blood, like by the minute, by the second, actually. I started losing a ton of blood. And um, they, I was losing so much blood where they, they couldn't even get blood through an IV to give me a blood transfusion. So I had, they were like, they were pricking so many spots in my body just to try to find a vein and nothing was coming out. And I remember just laying there like... I was kind of out of it, but I remember just laying there thinking, like, just, just trying to be strong and take the pain of them pricking me all over my body like this because I'm like, okay, they got to do what they have to do. And I remember thinking, like, this is what I was afraid was going to happen and it's happening. But I remember, like, a sense of calmness coming over me, like, um, you know, if this is God's will... I mean, what can I do to stop it? And I, I do remember praying, though, like, Lord, please just bring me out of this. I need to be here for my babies. And, of course, I started thinking about DJ. Um, and for some reason, I don't get as emotional talking about that as I do when talking about dropping DJ off and that being my last time seeing him. I guess at this point, I was just thinking, like, you know, whatever is my fate, I'll have to accept it. I was, I was kind of scared, but I also had a, a sense of calmness come over me as well. And I could have been God, you know, telling me like everything's going to be okay. But, um, I had a sense of calmness. So, um, so then, okay. So they finally got a good IV. I'm not sure where, I don't know. I had so many pricks and stuff in my, in my body. I'm not sure where they had the IV, but they had to give me like two units of blood. I had heard later that I had lost 2.5 liters of blood and I, I had lost more than the amount that I had lost during the actual surgery. Um, so yeah, I did have to end up getting a blood transfusion. And what's crazy is because I was getting um, iron infusions to prevent getting a blood transfusion. And I ended up having to get a blood transfusion, not even because I had low iron. And they can't really, they really can't even give me a reason why I, I lost, I, I had, um, I started hemorrhaging. So that's the proper term for it. I had, my body started hemorrhaging and I started losing the blood. So they can't even really give me a real reason why that happened. Um, they were just saying, they were saying like, it, I could have labored too long and I could have had a partial uterine rupture. Um, they were saying like, it, they were saying it could have been from like a number of reasons. They really don't know why it happened. And then, um, I guess I started like having, I started clotting, blood clotting in my uterus and, um, they were trying to stop it. They gave me something to stop it. And they said if that didn't work, then I was going to have to have a hysterectomy. 
Oh, and at this point, when they started talking about the hysterectomy, no, they started trying to, they were trying to find, they were trying to find um, a vein to, to give me the blood through. Um, they weren't letting Dante back. And finally he went back to him. He was like, I'm her husband. I need to be back there. So they let him come back. And I remember seeing him appear and he was just look, like, looking so confused. He was just standing there. He didn't really know what to do or, or what to say. <coughs> he said he was just scared because when he left, it was only one nurse. And then when he came back, everybody's around me. He said they had gauze and everything trying to stop the blood. He said he saw the blood. So he didn't really know what was going on, but he was scared. Um, I also forgot to mention <laughs> when I first got back into recovery, I asked if I could be set up because I was tired of laying down. And as, as, as soon as they set me up, I was like, I feel like I'm going to pass out. And then I passed out. And then I came back too. And I was like, I think I just passed out. And Dante was just looking at me like, you did. <laughs> and I just think that's funny because I guess I, you guys know my history of passing out during the pregnancy. So I was like, I guess I just had to take one last one for the team. But yeah, so I passed out one last time. And since then, I've been cool. I haven't had that feeling at all. But um, what part was I on? Oh, Dante coming back and him seeing them like, um, you know, trying to just stop the bleeding and stuff. So he hears them mention the hysterectomy and he starts um, texting my family and everything what's going on. But finally they get, they get everything under control and um, they bring Chastity back to us and I can start having visitors again. But um, so normally you're in recovery for about an hour, an hour to two hours. I can't remember, but I was in there. So Chastity was born at 3.54 p.m. I didn't leave out of recovery until 10 p.m. that night. It might have even been like 11 p.m. I know it was really late. And I couldn't even go to a postpartum room. I had to go back to a labor and delivery room because they weren't sure if I was going to have to go back into surgery or not. They were just going to mon monitor me all night just to be sure. And um, luckily, I didn't have to. So finally, at about um, 10, 10, 30, 11 ish, they wheel me back to um, a room to sleep in. And at this point, I'm just like, I need to see my son. I want to see my son. And um, he wasn't allowed back into recovery. So when I finally saw him, I was just so happy. Why do I get, why do I always get emotional thinking about DJ? But um, my eyes welding up again. I don't know why I'm coughing. But um, so finally my mom, Dante, my best friend Ariane, and my mom come back to the room. And I see my son, I see DJ, and I'm just so happy. But he don't want to have nothing to do with me. He don't want to have anything to do with me or Chastity. He just like, it was in the grand day, it was 11 o'clock. His bedtime is at 8 o'clock, so he was tired. So, um, so I think that's what it was because then when he came the next day, he was more, uh, like, mommy, you know, trying to get in the bed with me and then trying to touch his baby sister. But, yeah, um, so I finally get to see him. I couldn't really hug him or anything because I couldn't really move. I remember being in a lot of pain, and they didn't want him to get on the bed with me because they know, like, they don't want him climbing all over me and hurting me and everything. So, But it was just such a relief just to see his face. So just the next couple of days, they were just doing blood tests just to make sure everything was getting back to normal. And it was. They said I wasn't going to need a hysterectomy because um, my blood stopped clotting. Um, they kept asking me about headaches. And at first, I was I didn't have any headaches at all. But two days later, I had got the worst headache ever. Like, like it was like a migraine. And at one point I was crying to the doctors and nurses like, cause I, they were saying, they were saying like the headache could have been from the spinal and they were going to have to do a blood patch where they draw blood and they put it in my spine. It was like another procedure, but I was crying to the doctors and nurses because I did not want to have to go through another procedure. I did not want another needle stuck in me. I just did not want to, I just, I, at this point I was just ready to go home and be at home with my family. I did not want to be pricked anymore. I was just tired and I was in pain and I was ready to go home. Finally, they gave me a medicine. They said, they said, we're going to give you this medicine. If this works, then we don't have to do the procedure. But if it doesn't work, they was like, we're going to have to do the procedure. 
and they were like, um, if you don't get the procedure, it will go away on its own. But we can't send you home with a newborn baby and especially to take care of the baby with your headache like this. Because it was that bad. I couldn't do anything. I had The only relief was me laying flat on my back. And um, that was it. That was the only relief of if I laid flat on my back. I couldn't hold her. I couldn't do anything. But um, so the medicine did help. The medicine did help. And this was the day I was supposed to be going home too. So that was another reason why I was crying. Because I'm like, I just want to go home. I just want to go home. So, um, the medicine did help and, um, and at first when the nurse came back and she talked to the anesthesia doctors, because they were the one that administered the spinal, they wanted to monitor me from, they wanted to monitor me for another day. And I was just like, no, I have to go home. They was like, well, if she's feeling better, then she can go home if she's feeling up to it. So, um, and that's when, um, they gave me the okay to go home. But there was one part that I'm missing that I wanted to add. Oh, so during the stay, throughout the whole stay, nurses were nurses and doctors were coming in there and they were just talking about, oh my God, you look so good. They were saying how bad I looked in recovery and they were just like, it did not look good for you. We were really scared. It did not look good for you. And even the nurses that didn't see me, they was like, they was like, you're the one who um, lost all that blood in recovery the other day. It's like, it's almost like I was like the talk of labor and delivery you know, that week, because I guess it was such a scary situation. And while you're in recovery, the meds are still in you. So you're kind of out of it. So I guess and that might have been the reason why I was calm, just because I was, I was out of it. But, um, you know, I just don't remember. I do remember it being chaotic, but I guess I just wasn't there. I wasn't like in that moment like that. So I didn't know like how bad I looked or how I knew how bad it was, but I guess it just didn't register me until the nurses started telling me. And, um, yeah, so nurses were coming in there and was like, oh, my God, you're the one. People who came in there just to take my just to take my blood, they was like, you're the one who um, who started hemorrhaging and recovery. They just kept saying stuff like that. So it's like, I just thank God for being there and saving my life because you hear about women hemorrhaging after delivery and not making it. And um, the one story that I always refer back to is the one um, with that judge. I think it's a hospital in Atlanta and she didn't make it. She started hemorrhaging and um, the nurses weren't on it like they should have been. They they weren't taking her, her, well, I think her husband was the one that alerted nurses and they did not take her serious. She waited hours to get, just to get a scan and she ended up passing. Um, and don't quote me on that story. I think I think that's how the story went. But um, I, I just know she started hemorrhaging and she didn't make it. So I just thank God for saving my life. Um, I thank the nurses for being on their job. And I, oh yeah, and I also remember the doctors and nurses saying that luckily I was still under anesthesia when um, when I was in recovery because. I would have been in so much pain with everything that they were doing to me to try to stop the blood, um, to try to stop me losing all that blood. And I don't, I don't really know what they were doing because I couldn't see. I was laying down and um, I just know that they were doing a lot, like sticking things in me, stick, like in my vagina. They were sticking things up me, sticking needles in me all over. I know I would have been in pain. So they was like, luckily you were still under anesthesia. So yeah. Um, it, it was a very, very scary situation. Um, so, you know, some people, their stories don't turn out like mine with the happy ending. And I'm just thankful and to give all glory to God for, um, you know, allowing me to have a positive ending to my story. <coughs> and although didn't know the nurses and doctors help, but if it wasn't for God, God had his hands on them and he was in that recovery room while I was recovering and um, losing all that blood and he was there. So that's why I give all glory to God because I just can't thank him enough for saving my life. And just thinking like when I was going, when DJ was going into the school, 
And I was just looking at his face and he was just smiling. And I was just thinking like, what if this is my last time seeing him? And I kept telling myself like, stop thinking like that. Like nothing's going to happen. Stop thinking like that. So then part of me thinks that like I, I thought it into existence. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. All I know is that I'm here now. Um, I have both my babies. I was very, very happy because Chastity came out with, I guess she had the one little complication with her respiratory, but <clears throat> that was resolved within a couple of minutes. Um, she, throughout the rest of the stay, and now she's perfectly healthy. Um, she, They did say she lost too much weight. They said the goal is for the baby to not lose more than 10% of their body weight um, when it's time to go home, and she had lost 11%, so it was only 1%. <laughs> And as you all know, newborns do lose weight while they, um, when they first come into the world. And then like a week after their birth, they, the doctors like them to be, um, the doctors like them to be back up to their um, birth weight. But, um, because she didn't lose that much, they, they let me take her home and they just said, make sure she goes to the doctor. So I went home on that Saturday. They said she has to go to the doctor on that Monday. So, um. That's what we did. We scheduled her appointment. I scheduled her appointment while I was in the hospital. But I'm just thankful that she's perfect and healthy. Um, I'm healthy now. I had my two-week appointment yesterday. Everything is looking good. And, um, you know, I just have my family. And I'm just so grateful. I feel so much more in love now than I did before. I don't know. Something about bringing a new baby into your family just brings on a sense of um, just a sense of love. I don't know. I just know I feel like I feel it's like a a feeling of completeness. I have my husband and my two babies and I couldn't be more thankful. So let me show you guys her face. I want her to wake up. She's knocked out right now. Wake up, Chastity. This is her face. Chastity, wake up. You're not going to wake up for the camera. She sleep, guys. All she does is sleep. <laughs> Yesterday, she was up most of the day. But I was thankful for that because this morning, I think from like 2 to 7, or maybe it was like 3 to 7, she slept all the way through. So I got to get four hours of straight sleep. So yeah, but this is Chastity Dion Campbell. She won't wake up for mommy. But yeah, so she's here and she's healthy. And um, Dante was saying like, even if you didn't get your tubes tied, and you could have more babies. I wouldn't even want you to, because um, he was like, you got a. He was like, you got a testimony. And he was like, um, yo, both of your deliveries were, you know, pretty scary. Now, my delivery with DJ wasn't necessarily scary for me. It was a little bit scary for me, but it was more scary for on his part more so. He was the one that was having all the issues. And this time it was me. So it was like, he was like, I don't even want you to go through that anymore. He's like, we good with our two. And my mom was, was like, she didn't agree with me getting my tubes tied at, tied at all. <clears throat> Ooh, I'm sorry. I don't have a cold. My throat is just scratchy. Probably from all that crying I did earlier. But, um. But yeah, so um, my mom was like, she was like, I I didn't want you to get your tubes tied. She was like, but she was like, you've been, you've had two close calls and um, I would rather you have your life than to try to um, bring in another baby. And you know, what if next time it's not, you know, it's not a happy ending like that. So yeah, but thank you guys for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Remember to press the bell to get a notification when anytime I upload a new video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Say bye-bye. I guess that's a little way for y'all. <laughs> All right, see you guys later. Bye.